Part One of Balder Dead. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Balder Dead by Matthew Arnold. Part One. Sending. So, on the floor lay Balder, dead and round lay thickly strewn swords axes darts and spears which all the gods in sport had idly thrown at balder whom no weapon pierced or clove but in his breast stood fixed the fatal bow of mistletoe which loke the accuser gave to hoder and unwitting hoder threw against that alone had balder's life no charm and all the gods and all the heroes came and stood round Balder on the bloody floor weeping and wailing, and Valhalla rang up to its golden roof with sobs and cries, and on the table stood the untasted meats, and in the horns and gold-rimmed skulls the wine. And now would night have fallen and found them yet wailing, but otherwise was Odin's will, and thus the father of the ages spake. Enough of tears, ye gods, enough of wail. Not to lament in was Valhalla made. If any here might weep for Balder's death, I most might weep, his father. Such a son I lose to-day, so bright, so loved a god. But he has met that doom which long ago the Nornies, when his mother bare him, spun, and fate set seal that so his end must be. Balder has met his death, and ye survive. Weep him an hour, but what can grief avail? For ye yourselves, ye gods, shall meet your doom, all ye who hear me and inhabit heaven, and I too, Odin too, the lord of all. But ours we shall not meet when that day comes with women's tears and weak complaining cries. Why should we meet another's portion so? Rather it fits you, having wept your hour, with cold, dry eyes, and hearts composed and stern, to live as erst your daily life in heaven. By me shall vengeance on the murderer, Loke, the foe, the accuser, whom, though gods we hate, be strictly cared for, in the appointed day. Meanwhile, to-morrow, when the morning dawns, bring wood to the seashore to Balder's ship and on the deck build high a funeral pile, and on the top lay Balder's corpse, and put fire to the wood, and sent him out to sea, to burn, for that is what the dead desire. So spake the king of gods, and straightway rose and mounted his horse Sleipner, whom he rode, and from the hall of heaven he rode away to Lidskialf, and sate upon his throne, the mount from whence his eye surveys the world. And far from heaven he turned his shining orbs to look on Midgard, and the earth, and men. And on the conjuring laps he bent his gaze, whom antlered reindeer pull over the snow, and on the Finns, the gentlest of mankind, fair men, who live in holes under the ground. Nor did he look once more to Ida's plain, nor toward Valhalla and the sorrowing gods. For well he knew the gods would heed his word, and cease to mourn and think of Balder's pyre. But in Valhalla all the gods went back from around Balder, all the heroes went and left his body stretched upon the floor. And on their golden chairs they sate again, beside the tables in the hall of heaven, and before each the cooks who served them placed new messes of the Borsarimner's flesh, and the Valkyries crowned their horns with mead. So they, with pent-up hearts and tearless eyes, wailing no more, in silence ate and drank, while twilight fell, and sacred night came on. But the blind Hoder left the feasting gods in Odin's hall, and went through Asgard's streets, and past the haven where the gods have moored their ships, and through the gate beyond the wall. Though sightless, yet his own mind led the god. Down to the margin of the roaring sea he came, and sadly went along the sand, between the waves and black or hanging cliffs, 
where in and out the screaming sea-fowl fly, until he came to where a gully breaks through the cliff wall, and a fresh stream runs down from the high moors behind, and meets the sea. There in the glen Fensala stands, the house of Freya, honoured mother of the gods, and shows its lighted windows to the main. There he went up and passed the open doors, and in the hall he found those women old, the prophetesses, who by right a turn on Freya's hearth feed high the sacred fire both night and day, and by the inner wall upon her golden chair the mother sate, with folded hands, revolving things to come. To her drew Hoder near, and spake, and said, Mother, a child of Baal thou bearest in me, for first thou bearest me with blinded eyes, sightless and helpless, wandering weak in heaven, and after that of ignorant, witless mind thou bearest me, and unforeseeing soul, that I alone must take the branch from Lok, the foe, the accuser, whom the gods we hate, and cast it at the dear loved Balder's breast, at whom the gods in sport their weapons threw, since that alone had Balder's life no charm. Now therefore what to attempt or whither fly, for who will bear my hateful sight in heaven? Can I, O mother, bring them Balder back? Or, for thou knowst the fates and things allowed, can I with Hela's power a compact strike and make exchange, and give my life for his? He spoke. The mother of the gods replied, Hoder, ill-fated, child of Baal, my son, sightless in soul and eye, what words are these? That one long portioned with his doom of death should change his lot and fill another's life, and Hela yield to this and let him go? On Balder death hath laid her hand, not thee, nor doth she count this life a price for that. For many gods in heaven not thou alone would freely die to purchase Balder back, and wend themselves to Hela's gloomy realm. For not so gladsome is that life in heaven which gods and heroes lead, in feast and fray, waiting the darkness of the final times, that one should grudge its loss for Balder's sake. Balder, the joy, so bright, so loved a god. But fate withstands, and laws forbid this way, Yet, in my secret mind, one way I know, nor do I judge if it shall win or fail. But much must still be tried which shall but fail. And the blind Hoder answered her, and said, What way is this, O mother, that thou showst? Is it a matter which a god might try? And straight the mother of the gods replied, there is a way which leads to Hela's realm untrodden, lonely, far from light and heaven. Who goes that way must take no other horse to ride but Sleipner, Odin's horse, alone. Nor must he choose that common path of gods which every day they come and go in heaven, or the bridge be frost, where is Heimdall's watch, past Midgard fortress, down to earth and men, but he must tread a dark, untravelled road which branches from the north of heaven and ride nine days, nine nights toward the northern ice through valleys deep engulfed with roaring streams, and he will reach on the tenth morn a bridge which spans with golden arches Geol stream, not Bifrost, but that bridge a damsel keeps who tells the passing troops of dead their way to the low shore of ghosts and Hela's realm and she will bid him northward steer his course. Then he will journey through no lighted land, nor see the sun arise, nor see it set, but he must ever watch the northern bear, who from her frozen height with jealous eye confronts the dog and hunter in the south, and is alone not dipped in ocean's stream, and straight he will come down to ocean's strand, ocean, whose watery ring enfolds the world, and on whose marge the ancient giants dwell. But he will reach its unknown northern shore, far, far beyond the outmost giant's home, at the chinked fields of ice, the waste of snow, 
and he must fare across the dismal ice northward until he meets a stretching wall barring his way and in the wall a grate but then he must dismount and on the ice tighten the girths of sleipner odin's horse and make him leap the grate and come within and he will see stretch round him hela's realm the plains of niflheim where dwell the dead and hear the roaring of the streams of hell and he will see the feeble shadowy tribes and balder sitting crowned and hela's throne then must he not regard the wailful ghosts who all will flit like eddying leaves around but he must straight accost their solemn queen and pay her homage and entreat with prayers telling her all that grief they have in heaven for balder whom she holds by right below if haply he may melt her heart with words and make her yield and give him balder back she spoke but Hoder answered her and said, Mother, a dreadful way is this thou show'st, No journey for a sightless god to go. And straight the mother of the gods replied, Therefore thyself thou shalt not go, my son, But he whom first thou meetest, When thou comes to Asgard, And declares this hidden way, shall go, And I will be his guide unseen. She spoke and on her face let fall the veil and bowed her head and sate with folded hands but at the central hearth those women old who while the mother spake had ceased their toil began again to heap the sacred fire and hoder turned and left his mother's house fensala whose lit windows looked to sea and came again down to the roaring waves and back along the beach to asgard went pondering on that which Freya said should be. But night came down and darkened Asgard streets. Then from their loathed feast the gods arose, and lighted torches, and took up the corpse of Balder from the floor of Odin's hall, and laid it on a bier, and bare him home through the fast-darkening streets to his own house, Bredablik, on whose columns Balder graved the enchantments that recall the dead to life. For wise he was, and many curious arts, postures of runes and healing herbs he knew. Unhappy. But that art he did not know to keep his own life safe and see the sun. There to his hall the gods brought Balder home, and each bespake him as he laid him down. Would that ourselves, O Balder, we were borne home to our halls with torchlight by our kin so thou mightst live and still delight the gods they spake and each went home to his own house but there was one the first of all the gods for speed and hermod was his name in heaven most fleet he was but now he went the last heavy in heart for balder to his house which he and asgard built him there to dwell against the harbour by the city wall him the blind Hoder met as he came up from the sea cityward, and knew his step. Nor yet could Hermod see his brother's face, for it grew dark. But Hoder touched his arm, and as a spray of honeysuckle flowers brushes across a tired traveller's face who shuffles through the deep dew-moistened dust on a May evening in the darkened lanes, and starts him that he thinks a ghost went by, so Hoder brushed by Hermod's side and said, Take Sleipner, Hermod, and set forth with dawn to Hela's kingdom to ask Balder back, and they shall be thy guides who have the power. He spake, and brushed soft by and disappeared, and Hermod gazed into the night and said, Who is it utters through the dark his hest so quickly and will wait for no reply? The voice was like the unhappy Hoder's voice, Howbeit I will see and do his hest, For there rang note divine in that command. So speaking, the fleet-footed Hermod came home, And lay down to sleep in his own house. And all the gods lay down in their own homes, And Hoder too came home, Distraught with grief, Loathing to meet at dawn the other gods. And he went in and shut the door, and fixed his sword upright, and fell on it, 
and died. But from the hill of Lidskalf, Odin rose, the throne from which his eye surveys the world, and mounted Sleipner, and in darkness rode to Asgard, and the stars came out in heaven high over Asgard to light home the king. But fiercely Odin galloped, moved in heart, and swift to Asgard to the gate he came, and terribly the hoofs of Sleipner rang along the flinty floor of Asgard streets, and the gods trembled on their golden beds, hearing the wrathful father coming home, for dread. For like a whirlwind Odin came, and to Valhalla's gate he rode, and left Sleipner. And Sleipner went to his own stall, and in Valhalla Odin laid him down. But in Vrydablik, Nana, Balder's wife, came with the goddesses who wrought her will, and stood by Balder lying on his bier, and at his head and feet she stationed scalds, who in their lives were famous for their song. These o'er the corpse intoned a plaintive strain, a dirge, and Nana and her train replied and far into the night they wailed their dirge. But when their souls were satisfied with wail, they went and laid them down, and Nana went into an upper chamber and lay down, and Freya sealed her tired lids with sleep. And twas when night is bordering hard on dawn, when air is chilliest and the stars sunk low, then Baldur's spirit through the gloom drew near in garb, in form, in feature as he was alive, and still the rays were round his head, which were his glorious mark in heaven. He stood over against the curtains of the bed, and gazed on Nana as she slept, and spake. Poor lamb, thou sleepest, and forgetst thy woe. Tears stand upon the lashes of thine eyes, tears wet the pillow by thy cheek, but thou, like a young child, hast cried thyself to sleep. Sleep on. I watch thee, and am here to aid. Alive I kept not far from thee, dear soul, neither do I neglect thee now, though dead. For with to-morrow's dawn the gods prepare to gather wood, and build a funeral pile upon my ship, and burn my corpse with fire, that sad sole honour of the dead. And thee they think to burn, and all my choicest wealth with me, for thus ordains the common right. But it shall not be so, but mild, but swift, but painless, shall a stroke from Freya come to cut thy thread of life and free thy soul, and they shall burn thy corpse with mine, not thee. And well I know that by no stroke of death, tardy or swift, wouldst thou be loath to die, so it restored thee, Nana, to my side, whom thou so well hast loved but I can smooth thy way, and this at least my prayers avail. Yes, and I fain would altogether ward death from thy head, and with the gods in heaven prolong thy life, though not by thee desired. But right bars this, not only thy desire. Yet dreary, Nana, is the life they lead in that dim world in Hela's mouldering realm, and doleful are the ghosts, the troops of dead whom Hela with austere control presides. For of the race of gods is no one there, save me alone and Hela, solemn queen, and all the nobler souls of mortal men on battlefield have met their death, and now feast in Valhalla, in my father's hall. Only the inglorious sort are there below, the old, the cowards, and the weak are there, men spent by sickness or obscure decay. But even there, O oh Nana, we might find some solace in each other's look and speech, wandering together through that gloomy world, and talking of the life we led in heaven while we yet lived among the other gods. He spake, and straight his lineaments began to fade, and Nana in her sleep stretched out her arms towards him with a cry, but he mournfully shook his head and disappeared. And as the woodman sees a little smoke hang in the air afield and disappear, so Balder faded in the night away, and Nana on her bed sank back. But then Freya, the mother of the gods, with stroke painless and swift set free her airy soul, which took on Balder's track the way below, and instantly the sacred morn appeared. 
End of part one. Part two of Balder Dead. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Balder Dead by Matthew Arnold. Part two. Journey to the Dead. Forth from the east, up the ascent of heaven, day drove his courser with the shining mane, and in Valhalla, from his gable perch, the golden-crested cock began to crow. Hereafter, in the blackest dead of night, with shrill and dismal cries, that bird shall crow, warning the gods that foes draw nigh to heaven. But now he crew at dawn a cheerful note to wake the gods and heroes to their tasks. And all the gods and all the heroes woke, and from their beds the heroes rose and donned their arms, and led their horses from the stall and mounted them, and in Valhalla's court were ranged. And then the daily fray began, and all day long they there were hacked and hewn, mid dust and groans, and limbs lopped off, and blood. But all at night returned to Odin's hall woundless and fresh, such lot is theirs in heaven. And the Valkyries on their steeds went forth toward earth and fights of men, and at their side Skulda, the youngest of the Nornies, rode. And over Bifrost, where is Heimdall's watch, past Midgard fortress, down to earth they came, there through some battlefield where men fall fast, their horses fetlock deep in blood they ride, and pick the bravest warriors out for death, whom they bring back with them at night to heaven, to glad the gods and feast in Odin's hall. But the gods went not now as other while into the tilt-yard where the heroes fought to feast their eyes with looking on the fray, nor did they to their judgment-place repair by the ash Yggdrasil in Ida's plain, where they hold counsel and give laws for men. But they went, Odin first, the rest behind, to the hall Gladheim, which is built of gold, where are in circle ranged twelve golden chairs, and in the midst one higher, Odin's throne. There all the gods in silence sate them down, and thus the father of the ages spake. Go quickly, gods, bring wood to the seashore, with all which it beseems the dead to have, and make a funeral pile on Balder's ship. On the twelfth day the gods shall burn his corpse. But Hermod, thou, take Sleipner, and ride down to Hela's kingdom, to ask Balder back. So said he, and the gods arose, and took axes and ropes, and at their head came Thor, shouldering his hammer which the giants know. Forth wended they, and drave their steeds before, and up the dewy mountain tracks they fared to the dark forests in the early dawn, and up and down and side and slant they roamed, and from the glens all day an echo came of crashing falls, for with his hammer Thor smote mid the rocks the lichen-bearded pines, and burst their roots, while to their tops the gods made fast the woven ropes, and hailed them down, and lopped their boughs, and clothed them on the sward, and bound the logs behind their steeds to draw, and drave them homeward. And the snorting steeds went straining through the crackling brushwood down, and by the darkling forest paths the gods followed, and on their shoulders carried boughs. And they came out upon the plain, and passed Asgard, and led their horses to the beach, and loosed them of their loads on the seashore and ranged the wood in stacks by Balder's ship, and every god went home to his own house. But when the gods were to the forest gone, Hermod led Sleipner from Valhalla forth and saddled him. Before that Sleipner brooked no meaner hand than Odin's on his mane, on his broad back no lesser rider bore. Yet docile now he stood at Hermod's side, arching his neck and glad to be bestrode, knowing the god they went to seek. How dear! But Hermod mounted him, and sadly fared in silence up the dark untravelled road, which branches from the north of heaven, and went all day. And daylight waned, and night came on, and all that night he rode, and journeyed so nine days, nine nights, toward the northern ice, through valleys deep engulfed by roaring streams. And on the tenth morn he beheld the bridge which spans with golden arches Giles' stream, 
and on the bridge a damsel watching armed in the straight passage at the further end where the road issues between walling rocks scant space that warder left for passers-by but as when cowherds in october drive their kine across a snowy mountain pass to winter pasture on the southern side and on the ridge a wagon chokes the way wedged in the snow then painfully the hinds with goad and shouting urge their cattle past plunging through deep untrodden banks of snow to right and left and warm steam fills the air so on the bridge that damsel blocked the way and questioned hermod as he came and said who art thou on thy black and fiery horse under whose hoofs the bridge or giles stream rumbles and shakes tell me thy race and home but yestermorn five troops of dead passed by bound on their way below to hela's realm nor shook the bridge so much as thou alone and thou hast flesh and colour on thy cheeks like men who live and draw the vital air nor lookst thou pale and wan like men deceased souls bound below my daily passers here and the fleet-footed hermod answered her o damsel hermod am i called the son of odin and my high-roofed house is built far hence in asgard in the city of gods and sleipner odin's horse is this i ride and i come sent this road on balder's track say then if he hath crossed thy bridge or no he spake the warder of the bridge replied o hermod rarely do the feet of gods or of the horses of the gods resound upon my bridge and when they cross i know balder hath gone this way and ta'en the road below there to the north toward hela's realm from here the cold white mist can be discerned not lit with sun but through the darksome air by the dim vapour blotted light of stars which hangs over the ice where lies the road for in that ice are lost those northern streams freezing and ridging in their onward flow which from the fountain of vergelmer run the spring that bubbles up by hela's throne there are the joyless seats the haunt of ghosts hela's pale swarms and there was balder bound ride on pass free but he by this is there she spake and stepped aside and left him room and hermod greeted her and galloped by across the bridge then she took post again but northward hermod rode the way below and o'er a darksome track which knows no sun but by the blotted light of stars he fared and he came down to ocean's northern strand at the drear ice beyond the giant's home thence on he journeyed o'er the fields of ice still north until he met a stretching wall barring his way and in the wall a grate then he dismounted and grew tight the girths on the smooth ice of sleipner odin's horse and made him leap the grate and came within and he beheld spread round him hela's realm the plains of niflheim where dwell the dead and heard the thunder of the streams of hell for near the wall the river of roaring flows outmost the others near the centre run the storm the abyss the howling and the pain these flow by hela's throne and near their spring and from the dark flocked up the shadowy tribes and as the swallows crowd the bulrush beds of some clear river issuing from a lake on autumn days before they cross the sea and to each bulrush crest a swallow hangs swinging and others skim the river streams and their quick twittering fills the banks and shores so around hermod swarmed the twittering ghosts women and infants and young men who died too soon for fame with white ungraven shields and old men known to glory but their star betrayed them and of wasting age they died not wounds yet dying they their armour wore and now have chief regard in hela's realm behind flocked wrangling up a piteous crew greeted of none disfeatured and forlorn cowards who were in sloughs interred alive and round them still the wattled hurdles hung wherewith they stamped them down and trod them deep to hide their shameful memory from men 
but all he passed unhailed and reached the throne of hela and saw near it balder crowned and hela set thereon with countenance stern and thus bespake him first the solemn queen unhappy how hast thou endured to leave the light and journey to the cheerless land where idly flit about the feeble shades how didst thou cross the bridge or dial stream being alive and come to ocean shore or how o'erleap the grate that bars the wall she spake but down off sleipner hermod sprang and fell before her feet and clasped her knees and spake and mild entreated her and said o oh, hela wherefore should the gods declare their errands to each other or the ways they go the errand and the way is known thou knowst thou knowst what grief we have in heaven for balder whom thou holdst by right below restore him for what part fulfils he here shall he shed cheer over the cheerless seats and touch the apathetic ghosts with joy not for such end o queen thou holdst thy realm for heaven was balder born the city of gods and heroes where they live in light and joy thither restore him for his place is there he spoke and grave replied the solemn queen hermod for he thou art thou son of heaven a strange unlikely errand sure is thine do the gods send to me to make them blessed small bliss my race hath of the gods obtained three mighty children to my father lok did angerbod the giant as bring forth fenris the wolf the serpent huge and me of these the serpent in the sea ye cast who since in your despite hath waxed amain and now with gleaming ring enfolds the world me on this cheerless netherworld ye threw and gave me nine unlighted realms to rule while on his island in the lake afar made fast to the bored crag by wile not strength subdued with limber chains lives fenris bound lok still subsists in heaven our father wise your mate though loathed and feasts in odin's hall but him too foes await and netted snares and in a cave a bed of needle rocks and o'er his visage serpents dropping gall yet he shall one day rise and burst his bonds and with himself set us his offspring free when he guides muspel's children to their bourne till then in peril or in pain we live wrought by the gods and ask the gods our aid howbeit we abide our day till then we do not as some feebler haters do seek to afflict our foes with petty pangs helpless to better us or ruin them come then if balder was so dear beloved and this is true and such a loss is heaven's here how to heaven may balder be restored show me through all the world the signs of grief fails but one thing to grieve here balder stops let all that lives and moves upon the earth weep him and all that is without life weep let gods men brutes beweep him plants and stones so shall i know the lost was dear indeed and bend my heart and give him back to heaven she spake and hermod answered her and said hela such as thou sayst the terms shall be but come declare me this and truly tell may i ere i depart bid balder hail or is it here withheld to greet the dead he spake and straightway hela answered him hermod greet balder if thou wilt and hold converse his speech remains though he be dead and straight to balder hermod turned and spake even in the abode of death o balder hail thou hears if hearing like a speech is thine the terms of thy releasement hence to heaven fear nothing but that all shall be fulfilled for not unmindful of thee are the gods who see the light and blessed in asgard dwell 
Even here they seek thee out in Hela's realm, And sure of all the happiest far art thou, Who ever have been known in earth or heaven. Alive thou wast of gods the most beloved, And now thou sittest crowned by Hela's side, Here, and hast honour among all the dead. He spake, and Balder uttered him reply, But feebly as a voice far off. He said, Am odd the nimble? Gild me not my death. Better to live a serf, a captured man, Who scatters rushes in a master's hall, Than be a crowned king here and rule the dead. And now I count not of these terms as safe to be fulfilled, Nor my return as sure, though I be loved, And many mourn my death. For double-minded ever was the seed of Lok, And double are the gifts they give. Howbeit report thy message, and therewith to Odin to my father take this ring, memorial of me, whether saved or no, and tell the heaven-born gods how thou hast seen me sitting here below by Hela's side, crowned, having honour among all the dead. He spake and raised his hand and gave the ring, and with inscrutable regard the queen of hell beheld them and the ghosts stood dumb. But Hermod took the ring, and yet once more kneeled and did homage to the solemn queen, then mounted Sleipner and set forth to ride back through the astonished tribes of dead to heaven. And to the wall he came and found the great lifted, and issued on the fields of ice. And o'er the ice he fared to ocean's strand, and up from thence a wet and misty road to the armed damsel's bridge and Giles' stream. Worse was that way to go than to return, for him. For others, all return is barred. Nine days he took to go, two to return, and on the twelfth morn saw the light of heaven. And as a traveller in the early dawn to the steep edge of some great valley comes, through which a river flows, and sees beneath clouds of white rolling vapours fill the vale, but o'er them on the further slope descries vineyards and crofts and pastures, bright with sun, so Hermod, or the fog between, saw heaven, and Sleipner snorted, for he smelt the air of heaven, and mightily as winged he flew, and Hermod saw the towers of Asgard rise, and he drew near, and heard no living voice in Asgard, and the golden halls were dumb. Then Hermod knew what labour held the gods, and through the empty streets he rode, and passed under the gatehouse to the sands, and found the gods on the seashore by Baldur's ship. End of part two. Part three of Baldur Dead. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Baldur Dead by Matthew Arnold. Part three. Funeral. The gods held talk together, grouped in knots round Baldur's corpse, which they had hither borne, and Hermod came down towards them from the gate, and Lok, the father of the serpent, first beheld him come, and to his neighbour spake, See, here is Hermod, who comes single back from hell, and shall I tell thee how he seems? Like as a farmer who had lost his dog, some morn at market in a crowded town. Through many streets the poor beast runs in vain, and follows this man after that for hours, and late at evening, spent and panting, falls before a stranger's threshold, not his home, with flanks a-tremble, and his slender tongue hangs quivering out between his dust-smeared jaws, and piteously he eyes the passers-by, but home his master comes to his own farm, far in the country, wondering where he is. So Hermod comes to-day, unfollowed, home. And straight his neighbour, moved with wrath, replied, Deceiver, fair in form but false in heart, enemy, mocker, whom the gods we hate. Peace, lest our father Odin hear thee jibe. 
Would I might see him snatch thee in his hand, and bind thy carcass like a bale with cords, and hurl thee in a lake to sink or swim, if clear from plotting Baldur's death to swim, but deep if thou devisedst it to drown, and perish against fate before thy day. So they two soft to one another spake. But Odin looked toward the land, and saw his messenger. And he stood forth and cried, and Hermod came and leapt from Sleipner down, and in his father's hand put Sleipner's rein, and greeted Odin and the gods, and said, Odin, my father, and ye gods of heaven, lo, home, having performed your will, I come. Into the joyless kingdom have I been below, and looked upon the shadowy tribes of ghosts, and communed with their solemn queen. And to your prayer she sends you this reply. Show her through all the world the signs of grief. Fails but one thing to grieve, there Balder stops. Let gods, men, brutes beweep him, plants and stones. So shall she know your loss was dear indeed, And bend her heart, and give you Balder back. He spoke, and all the gods to Odin looked, and straight the father of the ages said ye gods these terms may keep another day but now put on your arms and mount your steeds and in procession all come near and weep balder for that is what the dead desire when ye enough have wept then build a pile of the heaped wood and burn his corpse with fire out of our sight that we may turn from grief and lead as erst our daily life in heaven. He spoke, and the gods armed, and Odin donned his dazzling corslet and his helm of gold, and led the way on Sleipner, and the rest followed, in tears, their father and their king. And thrice in arms around the dead they rode, weeping. The sands were wetted, and their arms, with their thick falling tears, so good a friend they mourned that day, so bright, so loved a god. And Odin came and laid his kingly hands on Baldur's breast, and thus began the wail. Farewell, O Baldur, bright and loved, my son. In that great day, the twilight of the gods, when Muspel's children shall beleaguer heaven, then we shall miss thy counsel and thy art. Thou camest near the next, O warrior Thor, Shouldering thy hammer, in thy chariot drawn, Swaying the long-haired goats with silvered rein, And over Baldur's corpse these words didst say, Brother, thou dwellest in the darksome land, And talkest with the feeble tribes of ghosts now, And I know not how they prized thee there, But here I know thou wilt be missed and mourned, for haughty spirits and high wraths are rife among the gods and heroes here in heaven, as among those whose joy and work is war. And daily strifes arise, and angry words. But from thy lips, O Balder, night or day, heard no one ever an injurious word to god or hero. But thou keptest back the others, laboring to compose their brawls. Be ye then kind, as Balder too was kind, for we lose him who smoothed all strife in heaven. He spake, and all the gods assenting wailed, and Freya next came nigh with golden tears, the loveliest goddess she in heaven, by all most honoured after Freya Odin's wife. Her long ago the wandering odour took to mate, but left her to roam distant lands. Since then she seeks him and weeps tears of gold. Names hath she many, Vanitas on earth they call her, Freya is her name in heaven. She, in her hands, took Balder's head and spake, Balder, my brother, thou art gone, a road unknown and long, and haply on that way my long-lost wandering odour thou hast met, for in the paths of heaven he is not found. 
Oh, if it be so, tell him what thou wast to his neglected wife, and what he is, and wring his heart with shame to hear thy word. For he, my husband, left me here to pine, not long a wife, when his unquiet heart first drove him from me into distant lands. Since then I vainly seek him through the world, and weep from shore to shore my golden tears. But neither God nor mortal heeds my pain. Thou only, Balder, wast for ever kind to take my hand and wipe my tears, and say, Weep not, O Freya, weep no golden tears. One day the wandering odor will return, or thou wilt find him in thy faithful search on some great road or resting in an inn, or at a ford or sleeping by a tree. So Balder said, But odor well I know, my truant odor I shall see no more to the world's end. And Balder now is gone, and I am left uncomforted in heaven. She spake, and all the goddesses bewailed. Last, from among the heroes, one came near, no god, but of the hero troop the chief, Bregner who swept the northern sea with fleets, and ruled all Denmark and the heathy isles living. But Ella captured him and slew, a king whose fame then filled the vast of heaven. Now time obscures it, and men's later deeds. He last approached the corpse, and spake, and said, Balder, there yet are many skalds in heaven still left, and that chief skald, thy brother Brage, whom we may bid to sing, though thou art gone. And all these gladly, while we drink, we hear, after the feast is done in Odin's hall. But they harp ever on one string, and wake remembrance in our soul of wars alone, such as on earth we valiantly have waged, and blood, and ringing blows, and violent death. But when thou sangest, Balder, thou didst strike another note, and like a bird in spring thy voice of joyance minded us, and youth, and wife, and children, and our ancient home. Yes, and I too remembered then no more my dungeon, where the serpent stung me dead, nor Ella's victory on the English coast, that I heard Thora laugh in Gothland Isle, and saw my shepherdess, the slogger, tend her flock, along the white Norwegian beach. Tears started to mine eyes with yearning joy. Therefore with grateful heart I mourn thee, dead. So Regner spake, and all the heroes groaned. But now the sun had passed the height of heaven, and soon had all that day been spent in wail. But then the father of the ages said, Ye gods, there well may be too much of wail. Bring now the gathered wood to Balder's ship. Heap on the deck the logs and build the pyre. But when the gods and heroes heard, they brought the wood to Balder's ship and built a pile, full the deck spread and lofty. Then the corpse of Balder on the highest top they laid, with Nana on his right, and on his left, Hoder, his brother, whom his own hand slew. And they set jars of wine and oil to lean against the bodies, and stuck torches near, splinters of pine wood soaked with turpentine, and brought his arms and gold and all his stuff, and slew the dogs who at his table fed, and his horse, Balder's horse, who most he loved, and threw them on the pyre. And Odin threw a last choice gift thereon, his golden ring. The mast they fixed, and hoisted up the sails. Then they put fire to the wood, and Thor set his stout shoulder hard against the stern to push the ship through the thick sand. Sparks flew from the deep trench she ploughed, so strong a god furrowed it, and the water gurgled in, and the ship floated on the waves and rocked. But in the hills a strong east wind arose, and came down moaning to the sea. First squalls ran black o'er the sea's face, 
Then steady rushed the breeze, and filled the sails, and blew the fire. And, wreathed in smoke, the ship stood out to sea. Soon, with a roaring, rose the mighty fire, and the pile crackled, and between the logs sharp quivering tongues of flame shot out, and leapt, curling and darting higher, until they licked the summit of the pile, the dead, the mast, and ate the shriveling sails. But still the ship drove on a blaze above her hull with fire, and the gods stood upon the beach and gazed. And while they gazed, the sun went lurid down into the smoke-wrapped sea, and night came on. Then the wind fell with night, and there was calm. But through the dark they watched the burning ship still carried o'er the distant waters on, farther and farther like an eye of fire. And long in the far dark blazed Baldur's pile, but fainter as the stars rose high it flared. The bodies were consumed, ash choked the pile, and, as in a decaying winter fire a charred log falling makes a shower of sparks, so with a shower of sparks the pile fell in, reddening the sea around, and all was dark. But the gods went by starlight up the shore to Asgard, and sate down in Odin's hall, at table, and the funeral feast began. All night they ate the boar Serimner's flesh, and from their horns with silver rimmed drank mead silent, and waited for the sacred morn. And morning over all the world was spread, and from their loathed feast the gods arose and took their horses, and set forth to ride o'er the bridge Bivrost, where is Heimdall's watch, to the ash Yggdrasil and Ida's plain. Thor came on foot, the rest on horseback rode, and they found Mimir sitting by his fount of wisdom, which beneath the ash-tree springs, and saw the Nornies watering the roots of that world-shadowing tree with honey-dew. There came the gods and sate them down on stones, and thus the father of the ages said, Ye gods, the terms ye know which Hermod brought, Accept them or reject them. Both have grounds. Accept them, and they bind us, unfulfilled, to leave forever Balder in the grave, an unrecovered prisoner, shade with shades. But how, ye say, should the fulfilment fail? Smooth sound the terms, and light to be fulfilled. For dear beloved was Balder while he lived in heaven and earth. And who would grudge him tears? But from the traitorous seed of Loke they come, these terms, and I suspect some hidden fraud. Bethink ye, gods, is there no other way? Speak, were not this a way, the way for gods, if I, if Odin, clad in radiant arms, mounted on Sleipner, with the warrior Thor drawn in his car beside me, and my sons, all the strong brood of heaven to swell my train, should make eruption into Hela's realm, and set the fields of gloom ablaze with light, and bring in triumph, Balder, back to heaven. He spake, and his fierce sons applauded loud. But Freya, mother of the gods, arose, daughter and wife of Odin. Thus she said, Odin, thou whirlwind, what a threat is this! Thou threatenest what transcends thy might, even thine, for of all powers the mightiest far art thou, lord over men on earth and gods in heaven. Yet even from thee thyself hath been withheld one thing, to undo what thou thyself hast ruled, for all which hath been fixed was fixed by thee. In the beginning, ere the gods were born, before the heavens were builded, thou didst slay the giant Ymir, whom the abyss brought forth, thou and thy brethren fierce, the sons of Bor, and cast his trunk to choke the abysmal void, but of his flesh and members thou didst build the earth and ocean, and above them heaven. And from the flaming world, where Muspel reigns, 
thou sent'st and fetchedst fire and madest lights sun moon and stars which thou hast hung in heaven dividing clear the paths of night and day and asgard thou didst build and midgard fort then me thou madest of us the gods were born last walking by the sea thou foundest spars of wood and framedst men who till the earth or on the sea the field of pirates sail and all the race of ymir thou didst drown save one Bergelma. he on shipboard fled thy deluge and from him the giant sprang but all that brood thou hast removed far off and set by ocean's utmost marge to dwell but hela into niflheim thou threwst and gavest her nine unlighted worlds to rule a queen and empire over all the dead that empire wilt thou now invade light up her darkness from her grasp a subject tear try it but i for one will not applaud nor do i merit odin thou shouldst slight me and my words though thou be first in heaven for i too am a goddess born of thee thine eldest and of me the gods are sprung and all that is to come i know but lock in mine own breast and have to none revealed come then since hela holds by right her prey but offers terms for his release to heaven accept the chance thou canst no more obtain send through the world thy messengers and treat all living and unliving things to weep for balder if thou haply thus mayst melt hela and win the loved one back to heaven she spake and on her face let fall her veil and bowed her head and sate with folded hands nor did the all-ruling odin slight her word straightway he spake and thus addressed the gods go quickly forth through all the world and pray all living and unliving things to weep balder if haply he may thus be won when the gods heard they straight arose and took their horses and rode forth through all the world north south east west they struck and roamed the world entreating all things to weep balder's death and all that lived and all without life wept and as in winter when the frost breaks up at winter's end before the spring begins and a warm west wind blows and thaw sets in after an hour a dripping sound is heard in all the forests and the soft strewn snow under the trees is dibbled thick with holes and from the boughs the snow loads shuffle down and in fields sloping to the south dark plots of grass peep out amid surrounding snow and widen and the peasant's heart is glad so through the world was heard a dripping noise of all things weeping to bring balder back and there fell joy upon the gods to hear but hermod rode with niord whom he took to show him spits and beaches of the sea far off where some unwarned might fail to weep niord the god of storms whom fishers know not born in heaven he was in vanheim reared with men but lives a hostage with the gods he knows each frith and every rocky creek fringed with dark pines and sands where sea-fowls scream they too scoured every coast and all things wept and they rode home together through the wood of jarnvid which to east of midgard lies bordering the giants where the trees are iron there in the wood before a cave they came where sate in the cave's mouth a skinny hag toothless and old she jibes the passers-by thok is she called but now lok wore her shape she greeted them the first and laughed and said ye gods good laugh is it so dull in heaven that ye come pleasuring to thok's ironwood lovers of change ye are fastidious sprites look as in some boor's yard a sweet-breathed cow whose manger is stuffed full of good fresh hay snuffs at it 
daintily and stoops her head to chew the straw her litter at her feet so ye grow squeamish gods and sniff at heaven she spake but hermod answered her and said folk not for gibes we come we come for tears balder is dead and hela holds her prey but will restore if all things give him tears begrudge not thine to all was balder dear then with a louder laugh the hag replied is balder dead and do ye come for tears folk with dry eyes will weep o'er balder's pyre weep him all other things if weep they will i weep him not let hela keep her prey she spake and to the cavern's depth she fled mocking and hermod knew their toil was vain and as seafaring men who long have wrought in the great deep for gain at last come home and towards evening see the headlands rise of their dear country and can play descry a fire of withered firs which boys have lit upon the cliffs or smoke of burning weeds out of a tilled field inland then the wind catches them and drives them out again to sea and they go long days tossing up and down over the grey sea ridges and the glimpse of port they had makes bitterer far their toil so the god's cross was bitterer for their joy then sad at heart to nyard hermod spake it is the accuser loke who flouts us all ride back and tell in heaven this heavy news i must again below to hela's realm he spoke and nyord set forth back to heaven but northward hermod rode the way below the way he knew and traversed giles stream and down to ocean groped and crossed the ice and came beneath the wall and found the grate still lifted well was his return foreknown and once more hermod saw around him spread the joyless plains and heard the streams of hell but as he entered on the extremest bound of niflheim he saw one ghost come near hovering and stopping oft as if afraid hoder the unhappy whom his own hand slew and hermod looked and knew his brother's ghost and called him by his name and sternly said hoder ill-fated blind in heart and eyes why tarriest thou to plunge thee in the gulf of the deep inner gloom but flittest here in twilight on the lonely verge of hell far from the other ghosts and hela's throne doubtless thou fearest to meet balder's voice thy brother whom through folly thou didst slay he spoke but hoder answered him and said hermod the nimble dost thou still pursue the unhappy with reproach even in the grave for this i died and fled beneath the gloom not daily to endure abhorring gods nor with a hateful presence cumber heaven and canst thou not even here pass pitying by no less than balder have i lost the light of heaven and communion with my kin i too had once a wife and once a child and substance and a golden house in heaven but all i left of my own act and fled below and dost thou hate me even here balder upbraids me not nor hates at all though he has cause have any cause but he when that with downcast looks i hither came stretched forth his hand and with benignant voice welcome he said if there be welcome here brother and fellow sport of lok with me and not to offend thee hermod not to force my hated converse on thee came i up from the deep gloom where i will now return but earnestly i longed to hover near not too far off when that thou camest by to feel the presence of a brother god and hear the passage of a horse of heaven for the last time for here thou comest no more he spake and turned to go to the inner gloom but hermod stayed him with mild words and said thou doest well to chide me hoder blind truly thou sayst the planning guilty mind was lok's the unwitting hand alone was thine 
But gods are like the sons of men in this. When they have woe, they blame the nearest cause. Howbeit stay and be appeased, and tell, sits Balder still in pomp by Hela's side, or is he mingled with the unnumbered dead? And the blind Hoder answered him and spake, his place of state remains by Hela's side, but empty. For his wife, for Nana, came lately below and joined him, and the pair frequent the still recesses of the realm of Hela and hold converse undisturbed. But they too, doubtless, will have breathed the balm which floats before a visitant from heaven and have drawn upward to this verge of hell. He spake, and as he ceased, a puff of wind rolled heavily the leaden mist aside, round where they stood, and they beheld two forms make toward them o'er the stretching cloudy plain, and Hermod straight perceived them who they were, Balder and Nanna, and to Balder said, Balder, too truly thou foresawst a snare, look triumph still, and Hela keeps her prey. No more to Asgard shalt thou come, nor lodge in thy own house spread ablick, nor enjoy the love all bared toward thee, nor train up Forset thy son to be beloved like thee. Here must thou lie and wait an endless age. Therefore, for the last time, O Balder, hail. He spake, and Balder answered him and said, Hail and farewell, for here thou comest no more. Yet mourn not for me, Hermod, when thou sitst in heaven, nor let the other gods lament, as holy to be pitied, quite forlorn. For Nana hath rejoined me, who of old in heaven was seldom parted from my side, and still the acceptance follows me which crowned my former life, and cheers me even here. The iron frown of Hela is relaxed when I draw nigh, and the wan tribes of dead love me, and gladly bring for my award their ineffectual feuds and feeble hates, shadows of hates, but they distress them still. And the fleet-footed Hermod made reply, Thou hast then all the solace death allows, esteem and function, and so far is well. Yet here thou liest, Balder, underground, rusting for ever, and the years roll on, the generations pass, the ages grow, and bring us nearer to the final day, when from the south shall march the fiery band, and cross the bridge of heaven, with Lok for guide, and Fenris at his heels with broken chain, while from the east the giant Rimmer steers his ship, and the great serpent makes to land and all are marshalled in one flaming square against the gods upon the plains of heaven. I mourn thee that thou canst not help us then. He spake, but Balder answered him and said, Mourn not for me, mourn Hamad for the gods, mourn for the men on earth, the gods in heaven, who live and with their eyes shall see that day. The day will come, when fall shall Asgard's towers, and Odin and his sons the seed of heaven. But what were I to save them in that hour? If strength might save them, could not Odin save my father, and his pride the warrior Thor, Vidar the silent, the impetuous Tyr? I, what were I, when these cannot avail? Yet doubtless, when the day of battle comes and the two hosts are marshalled, and in heaven the golden-crested cock shall sound alarm, and his black brother-bird from hence reply, and bucklers clash and spears begin to pour, longing will stir within my breast, though vain. But not to me so grievous, as I know to other gods it were, is my enforced absence from fields where I could nothing aid. For I am long since weary of your storm of carnage, And find, Hamad, in your life Something too much of war and broils, Which make life one perpetual fight, A bath of blood. Mine eyes are dizzy with the arrowy hail, Mine ears are stunned with blows and sick for calm. Inactive, therefore, let me lie in gloom, Unarmed, 
inglorious. I attend the course of ages, and my late return to light, in times less alien to a spirit mild, in new recovered seats the happier day. He spake, and the fleet Hermod thus replied, Brother, what seats are these? What happier day? Tell me that I may ponder it when gone. And the ray-crowned Balder answered him, Far to the south, beyond the blue, There spreads another heaven, the boundless. No one yet hath reached it. There, hereafter, shall arise the second Asgard, With another name. Thither, when o'er this present earth and heavens The tempest of the latter days hath swept, And they from sight have disappeared and sunk, Shall a small remnant of the gods repair. Hoder and I shall join them from the grave. There reassembling, we shall see emerge From the bright ocean at our feet An earth more fresh, more verdant than the last, With fruit self-springing, and a seed of man preserved, Who then shall live in peace as now in war. But we in heaven shall find again with joy the ruined palaces of Odin, seats familiar, halls where we have supped of old, re-enter them with wonder, never fill our eyes with gazing, and rebuild with tears. And we shall tread once more the well-known plain of Ida, and among the grass shall find the golden dice wherewith we played of yore. And that will bring to mind the former life and pastime of the gods, the wise discourse of Odin, the delights of other days. O oh, Hermod, pray that thou mayst join us then. Such for the future is my hope. Meanwhile, I rest the thrall of Hela, and endure death and the gloom which round me even now thickens, and to its inner gulf recalls. Farewell, for longer speech is not allowed. He spoke, and waved farewell, and gave his hand to Nana, and she gave their brother blind her hand in turn for guidance. And the three departed o'er the cloudy plain, and soon faded from sight into the interior gloom. But Hermod stood beside his drooping horse, mute, gazing after them in tears. And fain, fain had he followed their receding steps, Though they to death were bound, and he to heaven then. But a power he could not break withheld, And as a stork which idle boys have trapped And tied him in a yard, at autumn sees flocks of his kind Pass flying o'er his head to warmer lands, And coasts that keep the sun, he strains to join their flight, and from his shed follows them with a long complaining cry. So Hermod gazed, and yearned to join his kin. At last he sighed, and set forth back to heaven. End of Part 3 End of Balder Dead by Matthew Arnold Recording by Thomas Copeland